The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the days of King Herod, in the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Babijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the law of the Lord, of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once, when he was serving as a priest in the division's turn before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn hearts of fathers toward children and the disobedient to the understanding of righteousness to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How, do I know, how shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things have taken place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was getting, he was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were complete, he went home. After this time, after this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. The Gospel of the Lord. If you go one verse before our first reading in the book of Judges, it says this, the Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And then he goes on to, the, the writer of Judges goes on to describe Manoah and his wife who are barren and will bear a child by the summons of an angel of the Lord who appeared to them. God does not give up on us. 
when we feel that we've sunk in as deep as we can go, he reaches down. And what struck me today with this is that his solution is all about getting us involved personally. Because we're his dear children, and when he has a problem, he wants to enable his children to help and to grow. And so he asks this Manoah man and Zechariah to become involved in his plan. And he takes into consideration their wives. Like the, like the possibility, the impossibility of there being life coming from these two women, so is it seemingly impossible that the Israelite people could ever get out of the mess they're in. And so God intervenes. In both cases, he sends, in the first case, he sends a mess, Messiah figure. And in the next case, he sends another Messiah figure, sort of, to open the way for the Messiah. God has a plan. And this reading tells me that every single person who's alive has a place in that plan. And it might seem insignificant to us about our plan in God's plan. Where do we stand there? We might feel like we're nobodies. However, you will find out when you stand in judgment and he reveals everything to you. And you discover because you lived a life of faith that you touched more people than you could ever have imagined. Perhaps even by seeing only one person who had a cascading effect on thousands of others. We marvel at the prominence and the power and the influence of civic officials, presidents, priests even, bishops, and yet all these have also the capacity to disappoint, but at the same time, God can reach in and he can minister and lead and guide his children to become re-involved in his plan for the sake of life. And that's his agenda. I find it interesting that he solves two problems. God solves two problems by having a child born. And it's about to happen again here at Christmas. This is a revelation of how sacred each life is to God. Each life. Even the life of a child who is miscarried. There's great significance there. And so here is also a calling, a calling to cherish life. But in, the, in, the, in both the cases of Manoah and his wife and Zechariah and Elizabeth, they are also people who strive to do the will of God and to live by his commandments, to be friends with God, which we call righteousness. And because of that, they're able to more easily understand and judge God's plan and comply with it. And so as, as close as we come to the Lord, receiving the Eucharist, praying daily, and involving his mother in the task, we come to be more and more famili familiar with God's action and his desire for abundance of life for all of us. Regina Jenny, leta re, alleluia, qui aque menu isti portare, alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia.